it's here. And I'm actually a little bit late. <clears throat> it is August, Monday, August 21st. Now, granted, I was here last week and I put some cameras out. But I'm going to give you a little bit of rundown on what we're going to be doing here. And we're going to try to do something special and something very cool and something that you haven't seen. Especially from Manitoba. We're going to try to do something incredible and incredibly hard to do from my end. But we're going to try to do it. I have been through a rough, rough, rough last year. And I have taken minimal bookings and stuff so that I can hunt this elk rut as serious as I can and as serious as I want to. And I have pulled my camper trailer out into this lovely middle of nowhere land where you're not getting interrupted by anybody or anything other than the bugles, the cattle, and that's about it. And we're going to try our best to do a daily vlog of how my elk season goes. The bad, the nothing, the great, all that stuff. I'm not going to hide anything. It's going to be as transparent as it can get. And obviously we're going to do some kind of editing and stuff because I'm sure there's going to be <laughs> some ups, some downs, some stuff you don't want to hear. But uh, it is that time of year. This field right behind me, actually, last year, I had a run-in with my dream bull that is on the side of my truck right now. That uh, I'm going to share with you guys because we're going to make this into a little video because this is... I think, so, as majority of you know, if not, I've been lucky to work for some, you know, amazing outfitters, and, and, and I got my start in outfitting, and, well, guiding, I guess, in the guiding and outfitting industry when I was really young. One of my best friends at the time, when I was 16, 17 years old, I was sitting in my farmhouse in Lundar, Manitoba, and... I got a phone call, and he's just like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, nothing. Some 17-year-old kid sitting at home with my parents. And he goes, oh. gross. He goes, okay, well, pack your stuff. You're going, You're. he's like, you're flying into Edmonton tomorrow. I'll pick you up in Grand Prairie. You stop in Edmonton, and you fly to Grand Prairie, whatever. So 24 hours goes by before I know it. I'm in Edmonton, then I'm in Grand Prairie. And I'm this little 17-year-old. Well, not little, but you know what I mean. And, yeah, that was my journey. And that was, I am forever thankful for that because that got me into this, to where I am right now. And I'm just going to cut a little into this right now. I want to thank all of our guests and, our, and everybody who's helped along this journey that I have embarked on. This is our third year um, as Kingsland Outfitting. It was a couple of outfits before and I was part of it and it, you know it, it, it caught its traction and I'm grateful for all those people that helped me out along the way to get there. Um, but being able to have the hats, wear your own logo that you created, um, you know, I just turned 35 and it is something that is, you know, I dreamed about, I dreamt about my whole life and uh, it's, it's came true and it, it would never have come true if it wasn't for you guys, um, clients, viewers now with the YouTube, like I said, I, I never, I always told everybody I would never, I was never going to become the video guy and all that stuff, um, working with, again, working with those guys that did all the cameras I guided for an outfitter that, I mean, I had a camera crew behind me for six years, um, whether it be in the coast of Vancouver Island for coastal black bears or in the Yukon for, uh, for moose, caribou, grizzlies, all that stuff. So 
Yeah, we had we had uh, in it. I I'm not gonna do a name drop because not uh, not about it, but you all know who he is. <laughs> but uh, he's got a wonderful daughter who's got a, probably the most amazing uh, line of women's camouflage clothing in the world. Um, but yeah, so getting back to where we're at now, that elk that's on the side of my truck. In this field, well, a little ways in, but we had walked and walked and walked for about 14 days straight walking around, and the bulls and everything, they were not vocalizing as much as you would like to for the time of year. You know, they would fire up for two or three days, and then they would shut up, and, you know, it would just... You know, it was like throwing marbles in the, in the dishwasher or the dryer. Sorry, not the dishwasher. But, you know, it was just all over the place. And so one night I came to this field. And I got permission on it thanks to an unbelievable friend of mine. That is the reason why I'm out in this land. He, yeah, got me out here. Again, you don't get anywhere in this industry unless you have good connections good friends and trustworthy people um elk hunting is a very very amazing thing but in manitoba there's not a lot of them so you've got to be able to trust somebody or trust the people that come and because i mean if i bring somebody here to even film this year um what if they tell their friends what if they tell somebody you know then it's just you know it's just all that stuff. So it's it's a it's a gamble, but we've got us a we've got us a good young cameraman that you all know you've seen. He was our cameraman with assorted meats um, fishing last year. Hunter, he'll be filming with us this year. The kid's amazing. Uh, he's a sponge. He's my I call him my little son. Um, but anyways, this elk. I was sitting here. I actually slept right here, in my truck. The night before the big thing happened with him. Um, I was, you know, just watching them. And we were sitting out in the field watching them and stuff like that. And I was archery hunting because I really had it in my head. I really wanted to get one with my bow. Being Métis Harvester, I could, I could have a rifle right now. I could have a rifle right now. I could go shoot one right now. Um, but I just don't want to do that. I, I, I think that takes away the fun and all that stuff. Um... So this year's goal, for a whole month, four weeks straight, we're not even going to put a gun in our truck. Um, it's going to be stick and string, bow and arrow, and we're going to try and get up and close. So, again, I keep on dodging that that story, but here it is. <laughs> so we're way back in this this stuff. This this right in there somewhere, but way back. Um... And, and they're milling around, they're feeding and all that stuff. And we're like, okay, good, good. And I had a cameraman that night. The next day I didn't have one. He had to go to work, all that stuff, you know. Life happens. So um, he left and I said, you know what, I'm not going to go back to the camper. I'm going to sleep in my truck because I put him to bed. I want to be right here in the morning. I want to... I slept at the window cracked so I could hear them bugling all night so that they didn't leave. I could hurry. I, I woke up every two hours, got outside, ripped a bugle to hear if they were still there. They did. You know, it was going to happen. This was it. So, <clears throat> I get in and I'm on, on this side of, of the land there. I can hunt as far as I can. But once you get going to that way, to the north, there's a fence line. That runs east-west. And, well, those elk were feeding on the north side of the fence, which I can't hunt. So I get up in the morning, and I start walking. And you know what? It For a big guy, I'm telling you, I put on the miles. We put on, walked probably 10, 12K a day, if not even more. I don't really know. Um, and... So I just started out, you know, wake up two hours before, and because I'm already here, and I start my walk. It's about a 40 minute walk to where I want to be. So I get to where I want to be with about an hour to go before the legal lights pitch black out. 
And I can hear them. Cows are mewing and chirping. And there's bugling going on and everything. And I'm just surrounded by elk. And I'm just loving this because I'm like, okay, well, this is it. You know, the big guy's out there for sure. You know, he's not going to leave his cows. We're in the heart of the rut. Everything's going good. And then when time tick, 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 tick. I just look at my watch and I'm like, okay, 15 minutes. And I look up and I'm like, okay, I got about a five minute walk to where I really want to be. Wind was perfect, everything was good. Sprayed myself down with a little bit of tinks. Not a little bit, a lot. Cow estrus. And now is when the fun begins. I jumped the gun. I bugled way too early. I bugled with about 10 minutes. Sorry, I just, I can hear something walking in the bush right here. Um... I blew it with 10 minutes to go or whatever, and I shouldn't have, I should have waited till it was time, because I bugled, and I thought he was about 800 yards away from me, he was 50 yards away from me, so I bugled, and like that, he was on top of me, but the only thing is, he was on the other side of the fence still, and I'm crouched down on this fence, and... As you can see the fence, sorry, I pointed with the wrong hand. I'm backwards, it's all. But, so I'm crouching down. Oh my god, there goes an elk right there. <laughs> you gotta be kidding. Okay, so we're gonna have to be a little bit more quiet. But, um, so I crouch down. Because I'm shaking like a leaf now. And I never shake. I always tell everybody, you know, I don't get buck fever anymore and all that stuff. Or elk fever and all that stuff. Well, it happened. And so I crouched down again, and I am now feet from this elk. Like, I'm I'm talking, like, from, you know, an arm's length away from this elk. And I look up, and we kind of lock eyes, and he rips a bugle. And I can tell you what a running elk's breath smells like, and I can tell you what a running elk <laughs> elk's saliva tastes like because he screamed and bugled and it yeah is everywhere so whatever <clears throat> that's great everything's awesome this thing still has to hop the fence I mean if the fence wasn't there and I could still if I had permission for that land which I didn't I couldn't locate the farmer I mean I, I could have pulled back and I would have, we'd be sitting here still celebrating this bull because I put him on the side of my truck just to remember him that, you know, he was, uh, he was a giant. Um, but anyways, I need him to hop this fence. So, put this, well this is always in my mouth, put it in my mouth, I kind of put my head down and I just give the smallest of mews, just a little mew, but I angle it to the back and... As soon as I do that, all I hear him I hear a goose goes, <laughs> and you know that sound like when something like when you go to jump and you may give that little grunt. Well, that's what he did. So he jumped and he cleared me. His front cleared me, but his back end, his foot came down and it landed. His back foot landed on my back right ankle. So me, being me, <laughs> I scream ah f fudge. And so he's now like about, probably about where that fence post is, yeah. But he's so big, and he's trying to look back at me like this, but he can't because his antlers, his back scratchers are literally stuck on his back. So he does this, turns his head like this, goes all the way around, and then does this to look at me. And when he turned to look at me, <laughs> we locked eyes. And I had two thoughts in my head. I'm like, okay, he's either going to kill me with his antlers or else he's going to kill me with his <laughs> rocket because that was evident that he was ready to go. So I didn't want either of those things to happen. <laughs> I'm sure nobody would. Um, the other one doesn't sound as pleasure, or pleasure, oh my goodness, <laughs> pleasant as the other. Um, so I've got the rifle. If I had my bow, this would have been easy because I would have been able to a, stab him, or just slowly turn, and I don't know, I just figured with the bow it would be a lot easier, because I would have had been positioned a little bit different, but with the gun, I'm like, 
you know, I could, you know, I should have just, in hindsight's 2020, 20, but I should have just went left-handed and, you know, squeezed, but I, I, me, in the, in the moment, anyways, cutting it short because this is already long, I barrel roll over and I shoot from the hip. It's a sheet of plywood. It's a, it's an elk. It's a sheet of plywood, right? I can't miss that. Four feet away, five feet away. So, the elk runs off, goes into that land where I, I couldn't get permission to. So we go find that, that said farmer, and he lets me go in there and and my buddies and we go and we look, we look, we look. Couldn't find it. Couldn't find it. So I guess well we'll look for birds. I didn't miss it. I didn't miss it. No, I, I could tell you that that bull was alive. Because we saw him, or we had told friends about him, and they had saw him miles away. We pushed him out of that area. But I'm telling you, insane, 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 insane experience. And I wish I had this with me. If I would have had this camera on me, because none of you guys probably believe that. And I wouldn't believe that either. If I had this with me, it would have been the most amazing thing. So, this year, I'm not dicking around. I don't know if I can say that on YouTube, but we're going to. And I am going to have a camera guy with me every step of the way. I'm going to try to do a daily vlog of how everything does. Because when I get back, I know there will be late nights for the first little bit. At the end of August, early September, it's it's late. Late nights, early mornings. So, you know, when I get back, I can edit. I can put together a little video and just update, update, update. If it's not every day, it will be every second day. Or, you know, we'll get a couple videos a week for sure. Um... But I'm telling you, I am not going to let you guys down. I will kill one. <laughs> I will try my best for four, maybe even five weeks with the bow. If I can't do it with that, I will pull the rifle up because, I mean, it is sustenance and I do need it. I do eat. I need the meat to live. Um, I don't like buying store-bought meat. I don't do it. Um, so I live off the land as much as I can. And, I mean, I'm fortunate enough that... I'm in a great enough spot where whitetails, elk, so much walleye fish um, to eat. Uh, it, so, yeah. So this is what this video is going to be. This is the, like I said, we're August 21st. This is the start of it all. Let me know if you guys are in the comments, if you're excited to see this. If you want to see this, if you don't want to see it. I won't waste my time if you guys don't want to see it. I mean, I'll still film it, but I won't put it out because whatever. I'll probably put it out anyways. But yeah, so here we go. Elk season 2023 is underway. We've got like seven or eight days until opener. We're going to put out more cameras right now. And we are honestly in their bedroom right now. I know they are because I literally just saw a cow just run across. And I'm probably talking way too loud for where I am. But I have to come back to scene of the crime. And yeah, so saddle up gear up we're gonna try to put together the best stuff i know it won't be the best <laughs> editing stuff and all that stuff because i'm still learning but if you got this camera in your hands and the right lenses which we do i feel like we can get some pretty wicked stuff on camera we got our buddies at hunt fish manitoba and stuff like keevan um, and marcel and all those guys those guys I, I won't even touch those guys because they are unbelievable um, what they get on film and their cameras are way better than mine. But I did spend a pretty penny on this one. So, yeah, come along for the ride. I'm super excited to bring you guys with me. And this is just the start. We're going to do the elk. We'll do the whitetails. We'll hopefully film a bunch of friends on the whitetail side. And, yeah, like... We'll do some guided trips in there too, because I guess we still gotta make some money. But uh, we're not gonna guide for any big game this year, I don't think. Definitely not elk. <laughs> but uh, we do offer resident hunts um, for elk though. Um, but you do gotta sign an NDA because I ain't working this hard to get permission on this land if uh, somebody else can come here. So, anyways. This is where we're at. I'm so jacked up. The camper's here. This is home for the next six weeks. Probably eight weeks. And just listen. <laughs> you can't beat it. 
I'm telling you. All right, Kingsland Outfitting. We're gonna do this. I'm super pumped. Let's kill a giant elk. Even if it's not giant, I don't care. If it's wicked footage and it's all that stuff, I will kill the same bull that I killed last year. Just a. I don't care. He was scrumptious. All right, come along. Let's do this. Thank you so much. I'm so pumped. Let's go.